Hello, Conroe ISD family. Welcome to our August 2023 YouTube update. My name is Curtis Nall. I'm proud to be your superintendent here in Conroe ISD. Welcome to this new school year. Uh, as we wrap up now, almost two full weeks of the school year, it felt like it was a good time to come together and just have a little bit of a catch up on where we were last year and kind of where we are today and looking forward. For those of you that might be new to our community, welcome. We're glad to have you. And if you're new to our YouTube conversations, uh, once again, we say welcome to you. Glad that you have uh, been able to take a few minutes to join us here. Uh, just to give you uh, kind of an idea of what we do with these YouTube talks, it's a, really a chance for us to share information with you uh, on a, a bit of a deeper level than perhaps just an email would do. We get a chance to talk about kind of why we're doing what we're doing instead of just informing you of exactly what's happening uh, in your school district. So. We do enjoy these opportunities as we move forward. Some of these are recorded, like tonight's uh, edition, and then also sometimes we go live. And so when we go live, we are able to open it up to live Q&A, and we'll have some more of those as we move forward uh, during this semester. But let's jump right in by talking about last year. And included in the link, to, in the uh, email link today, uh, to this video and also down in the description below is a link to our year in review document that we had last year. You may have received this in your community impact newspaper that came out over the summer, but this uh, provides great information to you. I would encourage you to spend some time, uh, if you have the paper copy, uh, to spend some time looking at it, but you have now the electronic version of this that you can spend some time learning more about the school district. You'll see great information um, about awards that we have won, uh, the district's finances, different achievements of our students throughout the school year, uh, and a look ahead as we discuss our growth and, and where we're moving into our future year. So this is a, a great document. Once again, you have an electronic link to this. Uh, I would encourage you to read it, share it with your friends. Perhaps you have uh, friends or neighbors that are not directly tied to our school district, but they live in our community and they'd like to learn more about Conroe ISD, you know, maybe post this on your uh, your social media so that folks can have access to it and learn more about us. But we uh, are really thankful for our communications department, the great work that they do uh, producing this document so that everyone in the community can know exactly what's happening in your school district. Now, I have great news to share today. And, and uh, there's so much good news here in Conroe ISD that we appreciate. But as homeowners now, uh, I have great news for all of us as homeowners and that our school board uh, approved last week our tax rate for this school year. Now, you've heard a lot of conversations coming out of Austin throughout this last legislative session as they talked about tax rate compression. Part of Senate Bill 2 is this tax rate compression that helps school districts to lower our tax rate. Now, this does not decrease our funding, so they, they are maintaining our funding, but it does decrease tax rate for all of our homeowners. So when you look at our tax rate from last year, our tax rate was $1.11 or one eleven forty six to be exact. For this new school year, uh, for this year, 2023-2024, our tax rate is now going to be 9621. So that is a decrease of over 15 cents from last year. So what does that mean for us as homeowners of the bill specifically? If you have a home value of $500,000, last year your average tax bill was $5,127. This year a home value of $500,000 based on Senate Bill 2, this tax rate compression and the new homestead exemption rules that have been put into place, your tax bill would be $3,848, meaning a true savings of $1,279. So that is great news for all of us as homeowners. We thank our school board for the work that they do uh, to help us maintain a low tax rate while also offering uh, just a tremendous educational opportunities for our kids. We're thankful for the folks in Austin that did their work uh, to help us offer this tax rate as well. So you're going to see uh, real savings in October when you get your tax bill from us, and we are uh, all appreciative of that opportunity. Now, when you go back to the last time we visited in the spring, one of the things that we talked about a few times was our bond planning committee and the work that they had been doing. So let me catch you up a little bit about that. 
Uh, we have seen growth of over 3,000 students per year here in Conroe ISD for the last couple of years. And that caused us to do a demographic study. So we hired a demographer to come in and look at our growth and tell us what did the future hold for us. Uh, they have projected that we will continue to grow at this rate of about 3,000 students per year for the foreseeable future, all the way out past the next 10 years. That means that in about nine years, we will cross that 100,000 student threshold here in Conroe ISD. Because of this growth, we formed a bond planning committee to look at the growth and to make a recommendation to the school board about how we should address that with our facility needs. Uh, this bond planning committee was a group of 148 community members. We had parents, we had teachers, we had uh, grandparents, we had business owners, we had community members that are taxpayers in the community but don't have children. Uh, all represented on this great committee of once again, 148 folks that met 11 times. Uh, each meeting was about two and a half hours. So they put in the work um, to, to make a recommendation and they have made a recommendation to the board that we have a November bond election this year. Our board received that information and unanimously um, agreed to put a bond election on the November ballot. So let me share briefly with you what is included uh, on the bond election for November and knowing that we will come back and we'll have a dedicated night where we'll give a, a lengthy uh, and specific presentation about the bond. But just to give you a sneak peek here, uh, the bond has four propositions. As a voter, you will have a choice that you can vote for each proposition independently. So you can make a choice on each proposition uh, as you go through. Proposition A is focused primarily on growth and renovation of current schools. So you can see new schools, additions to schools, renovations, infrastructure improvements, safety, land purchases, transportation that includes buses and uh, new places to park our buses and our technology infrastructure. Proposition B is for technology devices. That is the laptops and iPads that our students and teachers use. Proposition C, 16 PE classrooms and elementary gyms for those schools that do not have those facilities currently. Uh, and then ag barn improvements for our two ag barns and then one additional ag barn to be built for our students in Conroe and Caney Creek. And then finally, Proposition D is a second pool for the school district to be built um, at the location of our natatorium there at Wood Forest Bank Stadium. The tax impact for all four propositions would be roughly two cents. So once again, we go back to that $500,000 mark. You remember you were gonna save $1,279 on your tax bill. If all four propositions of the bond are successful, you would have a two cent increase back from that floor, which would mean about $80 per year. So you would save $1,279 this year. The following year, if the bond is successful this November, the following year, then the tax bill would go up $80. So you'd still be at a net roughly $1,200 savings uh, on a $500,000 home. So once again, we're gonna have an opportunity in the future to really dive into this. We'll do that one live because we want you to have an opportunity uh, to ask questions, but we have over 80 presentations scheduled. We're scheduling more every day across the community between now and November. We wanna make sure that you as voters can be educated so that when you go to vote, you feel like you have all the information you need to be able to cast your vote in our bond election. So you're gonna have an opportunity to see a presentation via YouTube, but I also encourage you to, to really watch our social media, stay connected uh, perhaps with your local PTOs, your homeowners associations, perhaps even your churches. There are different organizations that are scheduling one of us to come out and give that presentation in person. So you'll have plenty of opportunities uh, to either see it in person or see it uh, on YouTube in the future. So that is the, the bond information. And moving forward, now let's talk about this school year. You know, we're off to a great start. Uh, it's always a challenge to, to get the school year started. We are uh, at around 72,000 students today on our way to over 73,000 as this school year continues. And you think about that instant on uh, that we have. You know, we, we have a Tuesday where we have no students in school and no students riding a bus. 
And then here comes the first day of school and over 70,000 students show up and over 40,000 students are riding a bus. And it's, it is a challenge for all, but I wanna give just great congratulations to all of our staff for the great work that they have done. And thank you parents for helping us make that happen. We know uh, in those first few days, the car rider traffic is unbelievable, but we're starting to see some of those things kind of get balanced out. Everybody learns what time they need to leave and the best way to get to and from school. The same thing is happening in our transportation department as we continue to balance routes and we we learn more about that. Uh, you know, we are continuing to look for bus drivers. So if you have folks that may be interested in coming to work for us at Conroe ISD, we are still short bus drivers. We'd love to hire more. So if you have great people, uh, please encourage them to apply. The same would go for child nutrition workers, our folks that work in our cafeterias. Uh, we have vacancies there as well. So uh, please share that out with folks that you may know that are looking for employment. Uh, it's a great place to work and we would love to have them be a part of our team. Along those lines, I want to circle back to transportation and really highlight uh, a group of people that are, are unsung heroes, and that is our maintenance team in transportation, the mechanics that work on our buses. This extreme heat causes a lot of challenges uh, for all of our equipment in the school district, but especially buses. And we understand that the air conditioners on buses are a huge safety feature uh, during this time, and our mechanics have been working seven days a week over the last few weeks to make sure that they can get all the buses back online, get the air conditioners fixed. And I wanna say a big thank you to them. Uh, in addition to, to those mechanics and transportation, all of our maintenance and custodial staff that have uh, really working to try to keep our air conditioners working through this heat as well. Uh, it's difficult work and it's hot and, and there's not always a lot of glory, but when you see those folks, uh, when you happen to be on campus and you see one of our maintenance folks come through or you see one of our bus drivers, um, custodians, child nutrition workers, those, those folks, please take the opportunity to say thank you to them. Uh, I know that means the world to them and, and we want to make sure that they understand that we see them uh, and we know that we would not have school without the great work that they do. So we, we are so appreciative uh, of them and, the, and their work. So with that, let's talk about safety a little bit. Uh, we know it's a, been a focus of ours for years and years. Um, we talk so often about keeping doors locked and keeping strangers off of our campuses, and that's important, and that continues to be uh, a very high priority for us this year. But there's so many other aspects to safety, and we, we talked a little bit a few minutes ago about traffic. You know, traffic safety uh, is critical. We, we never want to see a child be endangered on their way to school. So I just encourage you all, slow down. In our school zones, pay attention to crosswalks. We have crossing guards and they're great, uh, but we need to respect what they're doing and be careful. We, we never wanna take that chance of having a child get hurt. So if you would, please slow down, encourage your, your friends and neighbors, slow down. Let's pay attention to crosswalks. Let's pay attention to our crossing guards so that we can make sure that our students get to school and get home in the safest way possible. Now, the other big safety thing that right now is top of mind for all of us, and maybe our number one safety threat right now, is the heat. This is uh, unbelievable. Uh, I I've, I've, was born and raised in, in the Houston area, and, and so I've been here uh, really my whole life. And uh, this is really uncommon even for me to, to experience this level of heat. And we understand that uh, it creates safety problems. You know, our buses are air conditioned, but they don't, those air conditioners don't work quite like the air conditioners in, in our cars do. They do the best they can. In addition, we're always opening and closing the doors and letting heat in. So we are very cognizant of the fact that we need to be careful even on air conditioned buses, but we, um, you know, we limit the amount of time that students can go outside. I know there's uh, probably some frustrated uh, little ones out there that want to spend more time on a playground. And we would love to have that happen as well in the future. Uh, but right now we have to be very careful with the heat. And here we are now, uh, the first week of varsity football season. And this is a big deal in Texas. We know that. We look forward to these Thursday and Friday and Saturday night lights. And uh, we have our first football games this week, starting Thursday night at Wood Forest Bank Stadium uh, and then moving into Friday. We actually had a, a, a very large scale meeting today. Uh, all high school principals, high school athletic trainers, uh, our high school head football coaches, in addition to all of our school safety team, 
um, our director of nursing services, uh, fine arts coordinators, athletic directors. Um, in addition to that, we had Montgomery County Hospital District, the folks that run our ambulances for the county come in. And we all met together today to talk about how can we keep the Friday night football games as safe as possible, not just for participants, but for the fans in the stands. You know, our, our kids have been practicing in this heat. And so they're a little more acclimatized, but for many of us that may be fans, maybe we haven't been out there as much. And so we have uh, great concerns of keeping everyone safe uh, in the stands. We had a great meeting. One of the biggest things that you will see that we have changed is for the next two weeks, these first two weeks of the football season, all home games for varsity home games, the starting time has been moved from seven o'clock to eight o'clock. So we've pushed back one hour. Um, that'll get us a little closer to sundown and hopefully uh, help us to alleviate some of the heat in the stadium and get the direct sunlight off of folks in the stadiums as well. We're also making adjustments to sub varsity football times, uh, as well as making adjustments to our junior high football uh, times as well. So you may wanna have contact with the coaches at your school, pay attention to social media from your school, so you'll get updated times on that as well. We had great conversations additionally about making sure that our cross country kids are taken care of, our tennis athletes are taken care of, and then certainly um, we know that band students are experiencing a lot of heat uh, in their practices every day, as well as dance teams and JROTC. So we had good conversation. Every campus is aware, making all of the, the proper adjustments. Now, if you are planning to come out to a varsity football game, the first thing I would tell you is remember that we stream all varsity football games. So you can still experience the football game without coming out into the heat. So, you know, if you feel like you are healthy and and you can handle the heat, we would love to have you at the football game. We would ask for you to dress appropriately, right? Light colored clothing, light clothing that's going to breathe. Uh, we are going to have water stations set up so you can bring an empty water bottle if you would like, because you'll be able to fill that up to make sure that you're able to stay hydrated. Uh, but you're welcome to come out and be a part of the game day experience. There's nothing better. But for those family members that you have that maybe have underlying health conditions or that you're just a little worried about with the heat, let's encourage them at least these first few weeks to stay home and watch our live stream. They can watch it from the comfort uh, of, your, of your couch and your air conditioned living room uh, and enjoy a great live feed and, and see all the action, uh, but not put themselves at risk uh, with their health. So more information coming directly from your campuses, but if you would, please um, you know, just pay attention to those game times as they may change. And once again, varsity football games, these first two weeks, kickoff time has moved from seven o'clock to eight o'clock. So uh, all arrival times, stadium openings, all of those things pushed back one hour uh, here during these first few weeks. And hopefully we're gonna get a break from the heat after that and we can get back to more normal uh, operations moving forward, but we, we're just not willing to take a chance with the safety of our students or anybody in our community that comes out and, and wants to support us at a football game. Uh, a few other things that we have that are, are exciting this school year, we've started a conversation in the school district about cell phone usage. I think this is a great conversation that our school health advisory committee, our SHAC, which is made up of a group of parents, has really uh, done a lot of homework and investigated the, the challenges associated with cell phone use or specifically really social media use of children. Uh, and it's important for us as parents to understand that risk. And so we're gonna have a conversation as a school district about what should we be doing as a school district uh, in regards to cell phone usage at school or cell phone access at school. I think this is a, a timely and valid conversation. This is gonna be a large committee. We wanna have voices from from educators, from parents, from all across um, Conroe ISD. So if you would like to be a part of the cell phone committee, we're gonna have a link uh, where you can uh, click and sign up and we're, and we're gonna select that committee so you can come in and make sure that your voice is heard. And I don't know exactly where we'll end up. I think that's the power of this committee, right? Is wh where will we go? Um, you know, are we gonna limit access during the day? Are we gonna limit the ability to have phones at school period. Um, 
what will that look like? We're not certain, but I, I think we've seen the work that other school districts have done. I'm excited about where this conversation will take us. There'll be some surveys that will come out into the future as well. If you're not able to be on the committee, you can still uh, be able to share your opinion and have your voice heard as we go through this process uh, moving forward. And eventually here, maybe by the end of the semester, we hope to bring a recommendation to our school board for them to consider um, really what the end result of this cell phone committee may be. Now, I, I will remind you of a few things. Parents, you are the ultimate controller right now of cell phone use of your child. If you are concerned about the use of cell phones by your child while they're at school or anywhere else, you have that ability to remove their phone from them or remove their access to the phone. And if you let us know that that's your wishes, we'll do our best to, to help accommodate you and support you in that uh, at school. So just please let us know. But I think um, the research would tell you that limiting that access to social media is a good thing for kids. And I, I would encourage you as parents to really do a little homework on that. We're gonna try a little education campaign that you're gonna see rolling out, coming out of this subcommittee uh, to encourage you to really think about it. You know, it's hard to be a parent, y'all. It's hard to be, it's hard to be a kid right now. It's hard to be a parent. There's so many things that fly at our children uh, and fly at kids. I will tell you, um, I was that dad, okay? I was the one that didn't allow my children to have social media until they were um, you know, juniors or seniors in high school uh, because I wanted to make sure that they were prepared to do that. It's not always an easy decision to make and, and, and even harder to enforce sometimes, but uh, give yourself permission when you need it to be the one that, that uh, can, can limit that access if you need to. Okay, so more information to come on cell phones as well. And, and as we continue into this school year, we want to focus on having a positive year. You know, we have, uh, we have worked hard with our foundations teams on campuses to, to make sure that we have clear discipline expectations for our students. And you know, we want to make sure that they know what those rules are. And we want to do a great job of supporting our teachers and enforcing those rules to make sure that kids are meeting expectations so that every student has a chance to learn uh, in the classroom every day and, and it's free from distraction. So we're gonna continue to push forward with that, continue to work with your children uh, on that as well. You think about discipline and really back to that safety piece, one of the things that we still talk a ton about is vaping and uh, encourage you really to pay attention to that as well. The laws have changed a little bit. The discipline consequences have increased for vaping even on the first offense. So uh, it's a great time if you've never had that conversation with your adolescent child to uh, have a conversation about vaping, about not only the health risk involved, but also the disciplinary consequence and potential legal consequences uh, of vaping as well. So I, I think once again, you go back to the cell phone conversations and then the discipline and expectations. These are, these are positive conversations for us, right? It's how do we support uh, you as parents and through our role as educators by bringing you information so that you know exactly what all the research says and, and you are prepared to, to make decisions as a parent. And then how do we support you with that, uh, with what we do at school? Because in the end, we all want our students to be successful. We want them to be, uh, to feel fulfilled, uh, to be resilient, to, to be armed, to be great adults, right? That's the, we wanna give them all the tools uh, while we have our access to them uh, during their school time so that when they move on and they become adults, that they are prepared for the world that they're going to enter uh, and, and have the tools to self-regulate and, and do all those things. And I think working together, we can do that. So thankful for all of the voices that come together uh, for us as a public school system. And you've heard me say this before, you know, we are a public school system, which means basically we, we hold a mirror up in front of our community and we are the reflection of that community. And for us, we're so thankful for that because we serve an amazing community uh, and, and that allows us to have the success that we have uh, each year in Connor ISD. So when you look back on things like our, our year in review and you see all of these uh, great awards that, that, that we receive as a school district, we know very well that we receive these awards because of you. The great support that we have from our parents and community and the wonderful children that you send us every day to educate and then the amazing teachers that enter our classrooms each and every day uh, to teach those students. So thank you so much. And uh, we're gonna end today's video a little different than uh, what we typically do because I have something uh, that I feel is very beautiful to share with you.
each year at our uh, Celebrate Our Schools, which is kind of like our district convocation, uh, we read a book to our staff. And this year, we, we read a book called Maybe by Kobe Yamada. And it's just a beautiful little story. And, and like most children's books uh, that we would read to our kids at night, uh, when you hear it, maybe as a six-year-old, you, you hear it one way, and you, you hear it as a 13-year-old, you can get a whole other level of lessons. And then once again, as an adult, you, you uh, get a whole different lessons when you hear this book. But this year, we had a very a special guest reader that actually read this book uh, via video to all of our Conroe ISD staff. Her name is Carol DeMerritt. Ms. DeMerritt is the mother of David Vetter. Now you all may hear that name and go, I've heard that name. Well, David Vetter, sometimes you hear him referred to in media as David the Bubble Boy. Uh, David was a Conroe ISD student and actually our David Elementary is named in honor of David Vetter. So Ms. DeMerritt is his mother. She is uh, one of the most lovely women you will ever meet that has really turned uh, the tragedy in her life into just a beautiful story. Uh, we're going to put a link down below uh, to a, a little bit of a news story if you want to learn more about uh, David and Ms. DeMerritt. Uh, but, but now we'd like to share with you as we wrap up uh, Ms. DeMerritt reading the book, Maybe, by Kobe Yamada, and uh, I hope that you will enjoy it and feel free to share it uh, with your children as well. We wish you all a wonderful school year. We'll look forward to having more conversations as this semester continues. Thank you. Maybe, written by Kobe Yamada, illustrated by Gabrielle Baroche. Have you ever wondered why you are here? You are the only you that ever has been or ever will be. You have so much to offer. Maybe you will invent something that no one has ever seen before. Maybe you will build things that reach high into the sky. Your life is yours. Try as many things as you can try. See as much as you can see. Wherever you go, take your hopes, pack your dreams, and never forget, it is on journeys that discoveries are made. Maybe you will help others to see beauty in each day. Or maybe you will lift cheering crowds onto their feet. Do everything with love. Follow your heart and see where it leads you. Maybe you are here to shine a light into places that have been dark far too long. Maybe you will speak up for those who can't speak for themselves. Maybe you are here to help in ways that only you can. There will be struggles, there will be fears, and it will always be easy. At times it will feel really hard and you might make a mess of things. You may fall down, you may fail, but you will always get back up and you will rise a little stronger and a little taller because there really is more inside you than you know and this world needs your gifts, your talents, your big ideas, and maybe you are just getting started. What if you are only scratching the surface of what you can do and who you can be? What if you have talents you haven't discovered yet? There is something powerful, even magical about you. You already have everything it takes to do big things. Maybe you have no idea just how good you really can be and maybe you don't know how much you matter. But maybe, just maybe, the world has been waiting centuries for someone exactly like you. One thing is for sure, you are here. And because you are here, anything is possible.